what? Whoa, that's too close. Hello, and welcome back to Megan Gets Crafty in the Sewing Room again. Just kidding, we're in the kitchen. But today I am super nervous, super excited, and yeah, I'm just gonna take you along with me because I have no idea what is about to happen in the next couple hours. I have a dress that I love. You've seen it before, you're looking at it right now. That one right there. I got this dress probably half a year ago and I have worn it to death, literally to death. I wear it to clean. I've worn it to pot plants. I've worn it on date nights. Guys, this dress is just a staple in my closet and I love it so much. Anyway, I will link it down below if it's still available, but it only came in two colors and yeah, it just fits me perfectly. It's so easy. If you're meeting me for the first time, my name is Megan Fox. I choose to wear dresses and skirts all the time. Not only are dresses so pretty and feminine, but they're actually really effortless. You throw it on and you're ready to go. And they're super duper comfortable. So I love dresses and I don't always buy them. I love that I can sew and make what I have in my head. So hopefully that's what's gonna happen today. I'm gonna to take this dress and I'm going to replicate it, I guess is what you could say. <laughs> so hopefully by the end of this video, I will have a dress or two that fit right like this one. This dress has like kind of like baseball sleeves, I think is what you would call this. It's like a sheath dress, like it's just one piece from neck to hem. And then there's these like detailed darts that give it a little bit of shape without being it just like a basic sack dress. I did make a video previously where I sewed a sack dress and showed you how to do it, kind of like the one I'm wearing right now. Um, I really do like that style, but it doesn't have a ton of shape. And so that's why I really like this one here. Also, this dress features a shirt tail hemline, which I really like and I think it adds some fun and interest. I am not a trained seamstress in any way, but if you are kind of a beginner yourself or thinking about getting into it, maybe this video can encourage you to try it as well. I don't really understand patterns very well. Um, I've tried to work with them before and yeah, at the end of the day, I like to work with patterns that I've made myself. So let's see if I can make a dress without a pattern. So this little cutie just joined me and I'm here to tell you that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. And I love Skillshare. You guys have heard me talk about them so many times before, but I have an awesome offer for you. And I think you might want to take advantage of it. Skillshare is an online learning community. Yeah, it is. Where you can learn all kinds of things. And as a stay-at-home mom, I really love Skillshare because it just gives me like an education while I'm still at home. It's a super great value for what it actually costs. So whether you're just looking to hone in on a new skill or maybe you're actually thinking about starting a little side hustle and you wanna learn the skills to do that, Skillshare is probably for you. I have recently been taking in a class about color schemes and like what looks good on your skin, things like that. And I was watching that while I decluttered my closet. If you guys missed that video, go ahead and click on that one next. Super motivating. And so I think you guys would really enjoy that class. If you would like to check out Skillshare for yourself, now is the time to do it. They have given me a link to share with you guys. It's down below in the description box. Click on it and the first 500 people are going to get two months free on Skillshare. So I highly recommend that you click on that video at the end of the video. I'll remind you again at the end, that way you don't forget. Anyway, without any further ado, let's see what skills I have when it comes to sewing without a pattern. So I'm in my kitchen today just because I love cutting dresses on the kitchen table. I used to cut my dresses on the floor, but yeah, that doesn't work anymore with little people around. So I'm gonna be cutting my dress right here on the table. I have this cheap Dollar Tree wrapping paper that I'm gonna use to make Mama, my own. Mama, Mama. Mama's busy, yeah, I love you. I have this cheap Dollar Tree wrapping paper that I'm gonna use to make a pattern. If you're trying to copy a dress, you don't wanna to have to do the work twice. So you wanna know what you did. So I like to record what I did using a pattern and then I can adjust it from there. And if it works out great, I can do it again. I have knives here because I don't, I never bought fabric weights and I think knives work just fine. Also, you guys are looking at this big stack of fabric here. I'm very ashamed of myself. I used to never have more than two pieces of fabric waiting at a time, but I've become kind of a fabric hoarder here. This is embarrassing. These two pieces, I think I'm actually gonna use one of them for my first dress, just to see if it works out. And then these are my dresses that I really, really hope do work out at some point. I'm not gonna sew all these in the same exact way, but these are my options here. I'm thinking this one would be a nice, still like springy winter dress, or this one too, I don't know. I'm a little worried about this fabric because it is white. I'm afraid you're gonna be able to see through it too much, so we'll see. But yeah, this is like a double knit from the 1970s. I can't believe that I found this at a garage sale for like $1.99 for each piece, and it's like four yards a piece, I think. Guys, don't buy double knit if you can help it because it's pretty thick, not very um, stretchy, but that's perfect for making a first attempt dress because it's not gonna like stretch a ton when I'm sewing it, and it's gonna be easy to cut because it just lays there. And I really like this side. Are you guys gonna be disappointed in me if I use the solid side? Like, it has some variegation in it. 
over this. I don't know, I just feel like this is so specific. See, maybe if I make a dress like this for me and it works out, then I can make a dress like this for Vani. <laughs> I have a two-year-old if you're just new to my channel and I'm trying to get into some sewing for her too. Also, very, very important, I have two scissors. One for cutting fabric and the other one for cutting the wrapping paper for the pattern. Guys, it's very, very, very important. My mother taught me this at a very young age. You don't cut paper with your sewing scissors. This scissors is awesome. It's super sharp and I will link it down below. You will love it if you don't already have an amazing fabric scissors. Okay, first I'm just looking at the dress and seeing how it's constructed. There's two sleeves, one panel for the front, and then of course a panel for the back. And then here they did like a ribbing edge on the neckline, so I think I'll probably try to do that too. The next thing you always want to do since you're sewing a dress custom for yourself is look at the dress and decide do I want it exactly like it is. For me personally, I think the sleeves could be a little bit more fitted. The fit of this dress is so nice, it just kind of like skims without being tight, but without making you look any thicker than you really are. That's because of the little seams in here. Also, as I look at this, it's a little short on me. I don't love it this length. So I'm probably gonna add like maybe two inches to it because I don't mind wearing shorter dresses in the winter when I have leggings on underneath, but if I'm gonna be wearing this in the spring and summer, I want it a little longer, especially with holding little people. <laughs> um, the neckline I really like, but I don't want it any wider than it is. This is about perfect. So I think I will take those thoughts into account as I make my own version. So here my dress is laid out and inside out so I can see all the seams. And I'm going to actually lay my dress in half again. If you're a beginner sewer, basically when you cut a dress, you lay the fabric in half. That way the dress is completely symmetrical. Now this dress is really easy because it appears like the front and the back are the same, which is great and super easy if you're trying to replicate it, but it might not work for you if you have a bigger bum in the back. So in that case, I would just lay your pattern over from the fold a little bit more to give you just a little bit more room in the back. For me, <laughs> that's not really a problem. And you can see here that the dress is not completely straight. That's because these darts are pulling it in a little bit, but I will still cut it completely straight for now. So now I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm going to just trace this main piece, leaving off the sleeves and remembering up here that I need a little bit of a seam allowance. Like I said, I'm Also going to just measure the seam to make sure it is about the right length. This is eight and a half. This is about nine and a quarter, which is perfect because of our seam allowance when we go to sew. Okay, we will do the back first. So I'm just going to trace the back neckline because that's always higher. You always would rather cut bigger than smaller because if the neck is like kind of choking or anything, you just cut a little bit more off. And then also do that with your pattern as well so you know for next time. And now I'm just gonna trace along the side seam the whole way down and I'm gonna add an extra inch and a half because like I said, this dress is a little short. And it's always good to go longer rather than shorter because you can always hem it more later. here. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully it works out. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the front side. With this dress, it's going to look exactly the same as the back. It's just going to have a little bit of a lower neck in the front. Okay, here's the back pattern and here's the front pattern. I'm now going to mark where the little darts were in the front and the back of the dress. I could have done that earlier, but I kind of forgot. It's fine. And I'm also gonna mark these as front and back, so I don't, yeah, it just makes it easier later. If you're learning anything at all from this video, please hit that like button. And it's just nice to know which ones you like. So here I can see that the back of the sleeve is 10 inches. And let's see if the front of the sleeve is the same. Probably not. No, it's a whole inch shorter. So 10 and a half inches down brings me here. 
And now I'm just gonna measure the bottom of the sleeve going around. And this is all finished measurements, six and a half. Okay, so six and a half times two is 13. So 13 inches is gonna be the bottom of my sleeve. Okay, here's how my pattern's looking so far. I'm just measuring and drawing, measuring and drawing. Okay, I got my fabric laid out, which is always the most annoying part, um, but I did measure and it's 16 and 16, so I know I have it at least relatively straight. And here I laid the pattern right along the fold. Remember, that's why you only need half a pattern because you're gonna fold the fabric so the dress is symmetrical. Um, if you wanted more room in the back, you could just slide the pattern over just a tad and it would give you more room in the back. But I'm just gonna cut it right like this, around. Whew, this is where I'm glad I only spent two bucks for this piece of fabric because there's no guarantees now. Okay, here is my sewing space. It's super primitive, but this is just one of those cubicles you sit on the floor. I laid it sideways on top of a table that I picked up at the auction. And then I just have craft supplies and sewing supplies in there. But I do like my Bernina. It is the Activa 220, and it's like, it can do a few like fancy things like buttonholes and stuff like that. But it's pretty basic, not a ton to mess up. Um, I know some people have sewing machines that are like a cross between a sewing machine and a computer. That's not this, but it does have a little screen here, and I, I really like it. But yeah, I will see if I can link it down below if you're looking for one. Maybe you could even find one used on Facebook Marketplace. Okay, there's no lighting in this room, hence I have this lamp here. But I'm not going to go into a ton of detail with the sewing part. The hard part was the cutting of it, and only time will tell if I did it right. So let's get at this. Okay, first of all, I'm going to use straight pins here and pin the dart so they don't slide around while I'm trying to sew. Yes, if I sound funny while I'm talking, I have pins in my mouth. Sounds dangerous, doesn't it? Also, pro tip here, I'm keeping my pins on a little magnet. That way, if they spill, I just have a magnet there to pick them all up again. I do have a box of pins too, but I just love this magnet idea. <laughs> Please don't judge me for all the things I'm doing wrong in this video. I never claim to be an expert seamstress. I'm just a girl who likes to save a dollar and I enjoy crafting and I enjoy cute clothes. So I'm combining all of them and we're doing a little experiment. Oh my goodness, two steps forward and one step back guys. Look at this. I pinned this whole bodice on the back and I realized I forgot I wanted this part to be the right side and this to be the wrong side because I don't want the pattern. So I'm going to unpin everything and seam rip that out. Yay. As you can see here, my sleeve here and the side of my dress bodice did not line up exactly. I'm not gonna do anything about it right now. I'm not gonna trim it or anything like that. I'm just gonna keep sewing it together and then troubleshoot later and I'll make any notes that I need to on my pattern. Um, I might just have to end up trimming it off. Hopefully that's the easy choice or I might have to slide the sleeve down or worst case scenario, I didn't cut my sleeve wide enough and this is going in the trash. So I'll let you know. Okay, I'm in my bathroom here at the mirror, just seeing if things look like they're gonna fit, if they're gonna line up. It's looking good so far, I don't know. If I look haggard, it's because I've been running around sewing while, you know, playing and entertaining and feeding two children. <laughs> okay, I just ran upstairs here really quick to just fit it on and see how it's doing. You can see threads hanging here and stuff, but guys, 
I am impressed. Um, I'm a little worried here because the neck, you can see it's already really wide. I need to add some ribbing yet, but the neck just got a little bit too wide and I know exactly why that happened. So I will adjust that. Okay, I don't know what I was expecting with making a dress without a pattern, but this went way better than I thought it did. Um, it fits really well. Like I said, the fabric has like too much body, so it stands a little funny here. But I'm gonna do this exact same thing again with that fabric that I really liked. And I think it'll really hang nicely because it's more of a crepey fabric. And you can see the shirt tail hemline down there. Oh man, I just love it so much. The only thing is, you guys can see this neck got too wide. I tried to make it narrower with some pretty little girly lace. It's just too wide of a neckline, but I know what to do now. I am just really happy, you guys. It could have went a lot worse for the first time. So it is two days later and I just wanted to pop this dress on and show it to you. This is the same exact pattern. I did it again. It fits perfectly. This fabric is so much better than the other stuff. It's a double brush poly, super comfy. This dress took me about two hours to make and that was with kids running around and getting them lunch and stuff like that. So it really didn't take long at all. The pattern went together really well this time now that I you know, had a practice try. Look at the hem, so fun. I did my own neckband here, right like the other dress, and if you're not sure how to do one of them, I'll link a video down below that shows you how. I always forget how to make them every time I do one, so I always have to re-YouTube it and figure it out, but yeah, it's not super hard. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was an inspiration to you. I know I probably didn't teach you anything, but maybe it inspired you to try making a pattern for yourself. I love picking up dresses and then trying to figure out how they were made so I can make it myself, and I don't know, it's like this weird little game I like to play. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate when you guys click on a video and watch it. If you're not subscribed, I'd like to invite you to do that now. It's right down below. And make sure you hit that bell. That way it shows you when I put a new video out. I will link everything down below in the description box that I referred to or used. And yeah, make sure you check that out. It's always super helpful down there. Also, there is a link down below in the description box for Skillshare. The first 500 of you are going to get it for two months free. For more modest outfit ideas, go ahead and click on this video right here. Or also, my most recent video is right here as well. So I'll see you over in one of them. Bye, everyone.